All right, so we're going to talk about uh, trigonometric functions of real numbers. So we've talked about the unit circle. The unit circle is the basis for trigonometry. And from there, we add some different definitions. We add sine, cosine, tangent. Actually, these are functions. So for example, um, x squared is a function. Square root of x is a function. Sine of theta is a function. It produces a value, which is kind of nice. How does it produce a value? Well, here's how sine produces a value. It's rather interesting. I'm not going to go into the history of it. I tried that first hour. went okay, but I don't think people liked it all that much. So we're just going to look at an angle in the unit circle where we call that theta. And we have some different parts of theta. It makes this triangle. We have the radius, which in the unit circle is always equal to 1. And then you have this piece right here, which is the horizontal part of the triangle. We'll call that x. And then you have the vertical part of the triangle. We'll call that y. And we use that to come up with this coordinate. It was an x, y coordinate. We've done that before, right? So if you know how to determine terminal points, you're going to have no problem with the date. If you haven't figured out how to do the terminal points yet, you might struggle a little bit with it, but it will give you time to review. How do we determine sine? We say that sine of this angle is whatever y divided by r is. And we spell sine, S-I-N-E. Don't say sin, okay? That's what we talk about in church. Uh, sine, S-I-N, okay? Don't say sin. Well, in the unit circle, the radius is... One, so it just ends up being the y value if you're working in the unit circle. Sine is y. The next one is not cos. Okay, so don't say cos. Don't say cos. It's cosine. We abbreviate it like that. The cosine value is x divided by r, and because the radius is equal to one in the unit circle, it's the x value. And then ten, we have tangent. So I try not to say tan, I try to say tangent. Okay? And we determine tangent to be the y value divided by the x value. y divided by x. Can somebody tell me y divided by x? Where else do you see y on the top and x on the bottom? Slope. In fact, the tangent of theta is the same thing as slope. They are equivalent. So equivalent that if you wrote like y is equal to mx plus b, you could just swap out m and write y is equal to the tangent of theta times x plus b. I mean, it is the same thing. Okay? All right? Now, what are these other things? They look a little confusing. Some people say kasuk. All right? Don't say kasuk. Say cosecant. Cosecant. And that's simply just the reciprocal of sine. So it's r over y. The next one, this isn't abbreviated for seconds. This is secant. And that is going to be the reciprocal of cosine, so it's going to be r over x. And cotangent. is going to be x over y, the reciprocal tangent. Those values we need to know. If you're wondering why is sine that, we, we decided it to be that. Okay, So just like this thing, okay, we, we decide that that thing is, it means whatever you multiply by itself. Like, like at some point we defined that, right? And we said, that means you, you take something and you, you multiply it by itself. Okay, so, you know, we, we define those things to mean certain things. Sine is defined as that, okay? And very important, in the ancient world, if you go back to Babylon, they actually had clay tablets where they had sine tables written out. You can still find them to this day because they, they're approximating the distance to the, the sun and the moon and stuff like that and the orbits. So, this is the first problem we get on the test where we get this piece, IDK. Does Mr. Gens like that? Nope, that's the phone call home. We'll make a phone call home, tell you to drop the college credit. You're not ready. OK, 
Okay, do not pass go, do not collect $200. Don't do that to me, I deserve better, so do you. So, we're gonna determine all six. Draw a picture and use special triangles, calculate the exact value of all six trig functions. So we're gonna do sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. We're gonna do cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. And we're going to do that for different theta values. We're going to do four examples in class, and you're going to work on your assignment. My theta value is pi over 3. Tell me something about pi over 3. 60 degrees. Very good. So we're going 60 degrees. Kenny knows how to do that, which means he's ready for his test or his quiz tomorrow. Is everybody else ready for their quiz tomorrow? Awesome. Let's get ready. Um, and so I want to find that coordinate for a 60-degree angle. Remember that the hypotenuse is always 1. What's this short side? A half. And then what is the long side? Root of 3 over 2. Rachel ate her Wheaties today for breakfast. Way to go. Actually, she had a turkey and mustard sandwich for lunch. Okay, so that means that this coordinate right here is 1 half root of 3 over 2. As long as you can determine that coordinate, you can do the rest of it, no problem. Which value is sine? And since the radius is 1, it's just the y value. So all you got to write down is root of 3 over 2. That's it. Which value is cosine? So it's just one half. How do I determine the tangent? Yeah, I take the y value divided by x, so root of 3 over 2, divided by one half. So as Kenny said, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, so we multiply by 2 over 1. Those cancel, and you get root of 3. <laughs> Agree that we can't write IDK at all, that that's not that bad. Everybody knows how to find this terminal point, hopefully, and then we just put some things in there. Now, these are the reciprocals. I'm going to take the reciprocal 1 half because that's easy. What's reciprocal 1 half? Dose which is Spanish for 2. Now I'll take the reciprocal of the root of 3, and I get 1 over the root of 3. Can I leave it like that? So I get the root of 3 over 3. Cosecant, I get 2 over the root of 3. Can I leave it like that? No, nope. so I get... Two roots of three over three. What do you think? That's not bad, is it? We're gonna do the next one, and the last two are actually they're 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 pretty quick. And you're gonna get better at this as you practice. All right, I'm gonna write down all six: sine of theta, cosine of theta. Tangent of theta, cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. All right, tell me something about 5 pi over 6. 150 degrees. What kind of special triangle do I get? 30, 60, 90? What's this side here? This bottom is square root of 3 over 2. The other side is 1 half. So what is the coordinate? Good. Negative root of 3 over 2. Positive 1 half. What's the sine value? One half.
What's cosine value? <laughs> Negative root of 3 over 2. That was easy, right? Uh, then we'll do tangent. Tangent, I have to take the y value, which is 1 half, and divide it by negative root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, negative 2 over the root of 3. And what do you get? Negative 1 over the root of 3? Yes? Can't leave it like that, okay? But can everybody get to this point? We okay? Okay, pause, because I want to save you some time here, okay? I'm going to save you some time. Look what happens. When you take the reciprocal of this, you get 2, right? Now, right now, you're like, you're like Mr. Gantz, you can't leave it like that. I'll, I'll change it. I'll, I'll change it, okay? But what happens if I take the reciprocal of that? It's negative root of 3, right? Rach? So, no, because I got 1 over 2 times negative 2 over the root of 3. So those two cancel. Oh, okay. See it now? Okay, you had that look. But so I flipped it. So that one's okay, isn't it? All right, but how do you change that? I got multiplied top and by the, by the root of 3, and I get? See how I don't want to flip it here? Because if I flip it here, then the radical's back down in the denominator. See? So I try to just think ahead and, and make it a little bit easier for myself. Okay? And then this last one here, we're going to flip it, and we get negative 2 over the root of 3. Can we leave it like that? Nope. So negative 2 roots of 3 over 3. Questions? Yes? Right here? So what I did is, do you see how I came up with the negative 1 over the root of 3? So if I flip that, then the root of 3 is on top and negative 1 is on the bottom. See that? So I just flipped that one before, before it ended up there. All right, 7 pi over 4. These last two go a little bit quicker. 7 pi over 4 is how many degrees? Man, you guys are smart. You know who's pretty fast with them is uh, Aiden Collins. If you if you like walk if you see him in the hallway and you say 120 degrees, he says two pi over three like that. Challenge him. What do you think, Tony? You don't believe it. You don't think Aiden's got game, huh? All right. 315 degrees, so what kind of special triangle do you have? It's a 45, 45, 90. So that means that what are the sides? Root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. Much quicker at that than when we started, aren't we? We've only been doing this for a week. So I'm going to list the values. I'm going to list cos or uh, sine of theta, I suppose I should start with sine. That's what we've been doing all the rest of the time. Sine. Cosine. What happens if you divide those? Negative one. What's the reciprocal of negative one? Negative one. I gotta do the reciprocal of root of two over two. Two over the root of two. Yeah. So it'll be like two roots of two over two. 
So just the root of 2. So I'll make this one what? Negative root of 2. And the last one's easy. What is negative 3 pi over 2 in degrees? Negative 270. You end up right there, right? This is your angle right there. So what's your terminal point up here? 0 and 1. Those are easy numbers to work with. Sine, cosine, tangent. Cosecant, secant, cotangent. What do we play tonight? Scarlets. Make them bleed. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Name the movie. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Dodge ball. Dodge ball. I, I got them confused in my head. Ah. All right, what's the sine value? One. Cosine. Zero. What do you get if you divide them? Undefined. Yes, tangent can be undefined. Cosecant is a reciprocal. One. A for the day. Who's really smart? What's the reciprocal of zero? Everybody agree that that's zero? Let's flip it. Yeah, the reciprocal of zero is undefined. What's the reciprocal of undefined? Zero. Zero. And there you go. As you look at your homework, I have not put in all six of them there. I've just put the first three because those are the most important ones. Those are the ones you use the most. And all you got to do is just come up with that terminal point and figure out sine, cosine, and tangent. You should be doing that for these six on the front and for these six on the back. Now, tomorrow, you're going to have a quiz. And after you have that quiz over the conversion of degrees into radians, you are then going to, I'm going to look at a little bit of this with you. So this third page, if you don't get to it tonight, that's fine. Some of you, if you're looking for a little bit of a challenge, go ahead and start to work through some of that, figure it out. But we'll do a couple of those problems together tomorrow. Make sure you're on your way. You have a little bit of work time. And then we'll start a lesson. Uh, we won't be able to finish the lesson. Tomorrow's really a two-day lesson. So we're going to start it to get it in your brains. When you come back, uh, we're going to review just a little bit of it and give you time to uh, work, and it'll be good to go. We will not be testing next week. Next week's a four-week day, but I will be able to get your study guide next week. We'll be testing when you return, like, say, the following Tuesday. What did I say? Four-week day. Four-week day. Okay, you got a four-week day next week. Your time to work. You got about 10 minutes. A lot of people were able to get a decent amount of this done within the first 10 minutes. I'm going to come around and help.